what's up i just decided to stop and take some pictures some of y'all have asked me oh these Yeah, I'll be placing. Let me let me come back. Let me come right back. Okay, I think it's all good. It might be all good. You know, you have to always watch your surroundings. Um, some of y'all have asked me the name of that chair, my sofa bed chair, and my no build van build. So I'm gonna show y'all the name of the sofa bed chair right now. I'm watching. You gotta watch your surroundings, y'all. Y'all know. What happened to me last year, I be watching my surroundings. You know, fool me once, shame on me when I was at my people house. Fool me twice, the tow truck. Fool me three times, and that's on me. And it ain't on me no more. I'm going to let y'all know that it ain't going to be on me no more. I'm going to keep it real. For two houses back here by where the picnic ground So is. somebody owned this entire land. Yeah, the Burr family. The Burr well, family. It was, a, it was a gravel pit first. Okay. He bought it. And then on the other side of the expressway, where you can go underneath the expressway, mm -hmm. maybe they had the big family house. Was wow, there. so somebody owned this whole land. The whole property. That is so there, wonderful. Owned by one family. And What's... there was the one son had a house. Okay. Two of the sisters had a house. Two sisters had a house. Absolutely gorgeous. One family owned this entire home, y'all. Can you believe that I met this nice and, man? And, and the property on the other side of the expressway, which goes almost all the way down to Branch Hill. There was a little, like, private neighborhood up there called Epworth Heights. Uh-huh. And it was like a... My parents explained to me that it was built way back in, like, the teens. The teens, so like the 1917 or something yeah. like that. And it was like a summer home for mostly a Methodist community. They had okay, Methodist there. people. Wherever you pull over is your home. And you're, when you live in a van, wherever you pull off is your home, baby. So I pulled off, and this is my home. I know it's like glowy. Look at me standing up here. I don't know why I'm standing up here. I just wanted to do something different because it's beautiful. I was driving. It was construction. It was slow. I was like, you know what? I'm home. Let me get off. Let me pull over. Pull over. As a solo female traveler, a solo female nomad who lives full time in my vehicle, safety is of the utmost importance. One of the questions I get all asked all the time is, do you feel safe? Are you safe living in a van? Or people will say, I don't think it's safe for you to live in a van. Well, here are some things that I do to keep myself safe when I'm in my van, when I'm sleeping in my van. For one, I have this flashlight that my cousin gave me. This flashlight, it just happens to be called Defiant. What I did with this flashlight, flashlight, I put some Velcro on this side, I put some Velcro down there. So this flashlight just stays right there in place. This flashlight ironically can charge my cell phone and it can charge something else, anything that'll fit in here. It can charge a couple of things. So I have it here. And I have a plug, and so sometimes when I'm driving, I'll just go ahead and make sure this flashlight is fully charged. It's not charged right now. I haven't charged it in a couple of days. But this flashlight, if I flash it in your face, it will completely blind someone. It's that powerful. So that's one of the things I use for protection as a solo female traveler or as a female van dweller. It's this flashlight. Also, just one second. So here I'm sitting on my van bed and I this is a pillow, but I don't lay my head up that way I lay my head back toward where I'm sitting. So I lay back this way But right here this tote bag that I hear I always talk about ha I always talk about on this channel having things that have multiple uses So this is a tote bag that I keep I call it like my night bag And in this I have this is just hot water for my face and brush my teeth. This is like cold ice water for me to drink but most importantly we're talking about safety so i have two things over here for safety the first thing i have is this clip on you see this clip on i have this and this thing just pulls right out just pulls right out just like that and i keep it right here on my now i need two hands to really put it back it clips right on so it's like a perfect wait a second i gotta clip it on Wait a minute. It would be easier to do if I was using two hands. Okay, you could just and it pulls right off. So I keep that right there. The second thing that I have for protection is 
this little bat and i love a little bat because it does a job just like a big bat but it's just easier to handle so i keep that right here so when i'm sleeping my head is up this way my head is up this way and so i keep this bat here and i keep this here also i have some other things under my bed i have a little black bag under my bed so that's how I tape stay protected. I also have a mace on my key ring. Um, sometimes when I'm out walking, though, I don't like to my key ring is kind of bulky, so I don't. I'll just use keep my single key. But mostly, if I know I'm going to be doing a long walk or something like that, I keep the um, the big key ring with the mace on it. On it, and it's so important because as y'all just seen, I was just out in a wooded area. And like a park camping area and somebody several people walked up on me one gentleman walked up on me was talking and another gentleman um and i was two it was a man i thought it was a couple i thought it was a female and a male but it was actually a ma two males one guy just had really long hair and they were i think they were smoking or drinking or something but they didn't bother me but i just wanted to be aware because what i do is when i go somewhere like a park or a campground or just stop at a location that intrigues me i'll go ahead and open both of my sliding doors i'll open the back hatch and i'll you know i'll let down my windows because you know you want to air out your um van whether it's super hot super cold or whatever i like to get a good airflow going through here and so i'll have it open and i was out there taking pictures and several people just rode up on me and it's so important to even though my keychain with the mace on it was in the ignition or up front, I could have grabbed that, but I had all my doors open. And that's one thing as a solo female traveler, you want to be very aware. Generally, strangers are kind. I even wrote an essay called The Kindness of Strangers, but it's generally the ones you love that not that aren't kind because I think about poor little Gabby. And with Gabby, it was somebody who loved her or pretended to love her or maybe at one time did love her who harmed her allegedly gabby batillo i think that's her name and so generally when you out you don't really have anything i don't i don't feel any less safe than i did when i was in bricks i really don't you just always have to know your surroundings know where you know things that you can do for protection i even um take I, I even use YouTube. I do YouTube videos. Like, I do safety videos on YouTube. Like, people have safety videos for women over 50 and things like that. You can Google it. And I just do little boxing moves and kicking moves. And that's a good way to get exercise. But also a way to um, be ready. Do some moves on somebody, you know? So, those are just my safety tips. Because I often hear, do you feel safe? living in your van as a woman or you know do you feel safe living in your van so just you know keep you something nearby even my hot water water could be used for protection i could open this up and pour it on somebody you know a lot of times you might not have time to do everything but whatever you can do you do it always be safe a BS. always be safe i say always be charging your electronics and always be safe Take the joy.